So I spent all this time recording this voiceover and I spent another day like editing it and making it nice. But then when I listened back to it, it was the most boring thing that I've ever listened to ever. It bored the hell out of me. So I decided to add periodic cartoon sound effects to spice things up. I'm hoping that this decision will help me reach a wider audience and appeal to more people. Before I get into talking about the speed paint, I just wanted to really quickly thank everybody for 100 subscribers. The fact that a few of you guys like responded so positively to that sketchbook tour, it makes me so happy. If you're new here, make sure to go check out my Instagram. I've been posting on it for a few years now, and so there's lots of other art that you can look at if you get the chance. For this illustration, I started with this little robot sketch, and then it gradually started to turn into something that I liked more and more, and then I decided to make a full painting out of it. Once I got a bit farther into the process, I shot reference of myself. I like dressed up in an outfit. <laughs> Put on heels and stuff and posed and there is no way in hell that i'm showing you guys the reference they were so embarrassing oh my god i didn't do any sort of line art other than my initial sketch that you saw at the beginning i just let the work kind of come together as it went so i would cut it apart move it around you can see lots of liquefy lots of like copying and pasting lots of like splicing lots of dicing <laughs> I've been looking at a lot of art with super distorted perspectives, like characters that are really stretched out or really strangely like warped. So I wanted to try my hand at that kind of look. I've done stuff like that in the past, but it's an ongoing process to try to make it look exactly how I want it to look, you know? I started off with a color palette that was more pastel, but then as I kept going, I leaned more towards vibrant shades. So I still really like the initial color palette, but for this illustration I wanted it to be more impactful than it was looking, and then by the very end, it definitely leaned towards uh, purple. At this point, I added in this sort of shadow by taking the figure and then duplicating it and turning the brightness all the way down. And then I distorted it and like warped it into place, um, which is a trick that I use a lot of times for shadows. It's super easy, but I really didn't feel like I was far enough along with the painting to like commit to a shadow yet. So I removed it. And then later on, I added a more basic shadow. I spent a lot of time focused on the roller skate heel because this was like the front of the illustration. It was like right up in your face. It's the biggest thing. And so I really wanted to make sure that looked good. I wanted to distort the wheels. I wanted them to be more squished and weird and strange and distorted. I looked at some reference of roller skates and also high heels in general. I didn't want the wheels on the heel to be quite as bulky as a roller skate would look. I wanted them to be a bit more sleek than a roller skate, but still have the roller skate look to them. And then I really like how the wheel that's attached to like the long heel turned out. Like the two pieces of metal that go around the outside and create like that cutout is nice. I don't know, it just looks good. I think cutouts are good. I like cutouts. Sometimes when I'm feeling lost in the process, I will add a variable of like randomness. I do this all the time. Like if I don't know where to go with the rendering of something, I will add a layer of like random colors, random shapes, random textures over the top, you know, so on its own separate layer so I can get rid of it if I don't like it. But sometimes like just these random shapes can give you great ideas as to what to add to your illustration. I found this brick texture and I took it, flattened it down, lowered the opacity, and distorted it so that the brick sidewalk would feel like it was really coming at you. So at this phase, I decided that I wanted to enhance like this feeling of coming out of the space more and like towards you more. So I did this frame. Um, and yeah, the frame, I think, really pulled everything together. There's joints at the corners and there's um, like wiring and different stuff like that. I wanted to not only highlight the main character, but also the dish that she's holding, the tray. I just took a piece of the initial frame and I copied it and then adjusted it so it would work as like a second frame behind. 
and I was thinking about doing a third frame as well because I just I like the look of threes. I think threes are really attractive, but it just it wasn't quite working, so I decided just to go with two this time. But yeah, it's cool how the frame in the back highlights the tray. So it's like multiple illustrations in one. It's multiple illustrations in one. I showed this illustration to my friend and she said um, it reminded her of Robots, the movie. And this was an unfortunate moment for me. Or was it a fortunate moment? I definitely see the Robots the Movie reference um, in this. I, I did not think about Robots the Movie when I was creating it, but in hindsight, yes. I mean, it, it clearly it looks like concept art for Robots. So, um, yeah. Finishing up a digital painting is one of the best and worst parts. Um, it's the best part because you really get the chance to go in and add all the little details that make the illustration like come together. It's also the worst part because it takes a very long amount of time. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to, but I find, at least for me, the longer I spend doing sort of this refining stage, the better the final product comes out. So in this part, I am tweaking things like the textures of all the surfaces. Like I'm making sure that the glass looks shiny, like real glass. I'm making sure that the lighting is how I want. At the very end, usually I'll use like a color dodge layer and then do like a dark red. I've tried other colors too, but for me, red just seems to work the best. Like a really, like a dark, I guess a burgundy, you would call it. A dark burgundy usually works really good. And then this just adds like this magical feeling. The slight color shift of the highlight coming through adds a magical feeling to the, the piece. And so this is the final product. I'm super happy with the way that it turned out, um, especially coming from a sketch that I really didn't expect to turn into much. It was cool to see this piece develop as I went along. I'm going to be selling copies of this print on my website, so I'll leave a link in the description so you can go check it out if you want to and get yourself a print. Make sure to like the video if you liked it, and subscribe and turn on notifications so that you'll be like notified. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Alright, bye!